Hello, and uh, welcome to our training today. We're excited to have you with us. Uh, before we get into the training, I just would like to go over a couple of things. Uh, on your screen, you should have a control bar to control the webinar software. Uh, the very top button on that bar is kind of an orange arrow, and if you click on that, it will open and close the control window. Uh, inside that control window is a place where you can answer questions during the training session uh, as we'll keep them, all the microphones muted during uh, most of the webinar. Um, then when we get to the end of the webinar, we will go over the questions that you've typed in. Uh, as well, there's a button on there with a little hand on it, and you can click on that during the question and answer portion of the, of the training. And I can unmute your microphone, and then you can ask questions. So, um, oh, the other button on there is a screen button, kind of a green screen button. If you click on that, it will put it into full screen mode. So you'll have the, view, the, the best uh, viewing experience for the webinar. So we recommend clicking on that. So we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, first, I would like to introduce myself. Uh, my name's Bruce Ekman, and I'm the uh, founder of EasyNet Tools uh, Incorporated. We've been in business uh, doing web things since the, in, the very first Internet just started years ago. And uh, throughout those years, uh, we've built and worked with thousands of different companies and their websites. And so we've learned a lot, and the objective of these webinars are to share information uh, that we've learned so you don't have to learn that yourself. Uh, so uh, all of these webinars, I think, provide some good information, and it comes from uh, the School of Hard Knocks. So today's webinar is entitled uh, The Ten Commandments of Good Web Design. And so these are just some principles, uh, some, some things that you should do to have a good and successful website. There are, are a lot of them, and these are some of the ones that we feel from experience are very, very important. Let me start off with a disclaimer, though. Uh, not, not like the real commandments. These commandments are rules, and sometimes they're meant to be broken. I mean, there are certain occasions and certain reasons why you can, you can break these rules, but usually um, these are good commandments to follow with your website design that will help you to be more successful. Um, so let's just go through these Ten Commandments and talk a little bit about them. Okay, the, the first one that we're going to talk about is begin with the end in mind. And I think that this one is uh, really one of the most important commandments and uh, really one that shouldn't be broken. Okay, uh, I like a quote by Stephen Covey. He says, if we, plan, if we fail to plan, we plan to fail. So really, when we build our website, we need to plan it out. We need to begin with the end in mind. What do we really want our website to do? And I think it's important for us to come up with an objective, a goal, or a target of what we want our website to do. A lot of websites out there that people are using, uh, you ask them, what's the objective of your website? And they go, geez, I don't know. And that's probably about the kind of results they're going to get. Uh, if they don't have an objective, a clear goal, a clear target of what they want their website to do, then it's probably not going to not going to do it. Um, so, if, before you build a website, or even if now, if you don't have a clear objective, stop and set one. Decide what it is you want your website to do. If you want it to sell products, then that's a good objective. You want it to sell. You want people to order online then that's your objective. And you can get specific with that, and you can set uh, specific goals and specific targets that you can work on. But if you know where the end is, it's a heck of a lot easier to get there. Um, I, I, Earl Nightingale has kind of a descriptive thing that he talks about that I, I really like his analogy. He says, uh, if you start a ship and, and don't have a, you know, a destination, if you just start the engines and let it go, it's uh, probably going to end up on the beach somewhere a derelict because it didn't have an objective or a target to go to. But if you put uh, a map in there and a, you determine a destination and you put a captain at the helm of that ship, 99 times out of 100 it will get there. 
And your website is like that. If you have a clear objective, then you can work with your website, you can plan it out, you can work and you can actually get there. And that's going to increase your chances exponentially of having a successful website. Uh, now, one of the things that I'd like to do as a hobby, and unfortunately I don't get enough time to do it, but I like to build things in my shop. And uh, one of the things that I found, there's a statement uh, out there in the in the the woodworking area that's uh, something like uh, measure twice, cut once. And one of the things that I discovered fairly quickly is, uh, you know, that once I once I run a board through my saw and I cut it, if I cut it too short, you know, I just can't cut it longer. There's just no way to fix it. Uh, and so, uh, if you're, you know, you're working on some expensive woods, that makes you even w want to be more careful. But, to, you know, m more than once, I've ended up with a piece of wood that I've cut just a little bit too short, and, you know, it's just, it's just worthless. And so, uh, if we spend, I like the statements here, spend most of your time planning, spend more of your time designing, and spend the least amount of your time actually executing or building your website. So come up with an objective, you know where you want to go, then come up with your best plan on how to get there. And, uh, you know, uh, when a ship is out there and it's on its way to its destination, uh, most of the time it'll get off course a little bit. But as long as there's a designated destination and the captain's watching, they'll make course corrections along the way. And that's exactly what you'll be doing with your website. You uh, come up with your objective. You come up with a plan on how to get there. And then you make course corrections along the way to make yourself successful. So th I think that this is probably one of the most important commandments and probably one of the ones that's broken uh, very, very often. Okay, let's look at commandment number two. And this one is... I think really, really important on the list as well. And this is called the three second rule. Okay. Now I want you to look at this website. Okay. You've already looked at it for th three seconds, but the rule is, is that you should be able to look at a website and this is a real website that was up. Okay. If you, you should be able to look at this website and within three seconds, know that you're in the right place, know what they do, you should just be able to get an instant feel for what it is, okay? Now, it's been a lot more than 30 seconds. Now, okay, this is a website that I think you could look at for 30 minutes and not figure out what it is specifically that they're doing, okay? And it's not a bad-looking website. Uh, you know, it's nicely laid out, but it just doesn't communicate to you what it does in 30 minutes, let alone 30 seconds, okay? And, and this is a real website. And, and people wonder why their sites aren't working or why people aren't staying there, you know. People on the Internet are not patient. Uh, they're not going to try to figure it out. And if they have to read the text, and part of the problem is even if you re read this text, you still wouldn't figure out what this is, okay. Now, what these, these are is uh, they're little plastic things that you glue on your metal roof out here. I don't know if you live somewhere where there's no snow, you're probably going to know even less, but uh, they'll put these up on the roof uh, of the buildings so that uh, when the snow slides off, that it doesn't slide off and bury somebody when they're walking under the building. It keeps the snow from sliding off and breaks it up into pieces. And they just stick these on the metal roofs of the buildings to, to do that. Okay, But there's nothing here that would indicate that that's what it is. I mean, you, you have no perspective of size in the pictures. You have no idea what it is, okay? So this is a clear violation of the 30, sec, the 30 or the, excuse me, the three-second rule, okay? So now let's, let's look at a better example. One, two, three. Have you got what this site's about? Okay, you should be able to figure out in three seconds or less that this is a, a commercial roofing company that puts roof, roof uh, puts roofs on houses and buildings, okay? 30 seconds. This, this one is very simple and very effective and clearly communicates what it is and what it's talking about in three seconds or less. And that is what you need to do with your website. You need to make sure that it can communicate what it is that you do, what it is that this website is, so people know, hey, I'm in the right place, so they don't move on, okay? 
Okay, so now let's talk about the three-click rule. We, the, the previous one was a three-second rule. Now let's talk about the three-click rule. Three-click rule. Okay, and let's start out uh, with this three-click rule by making a little bit of an analogy. Okay, and we're going to use uh, what I call the grocery store analogy. We're going to compare a website to a grocery store. Okay, a lot of science has gone into grocery stores. And this is kind of a, a map looking down at a grocery store. You know, they put the cash registers up front and then they have all the aisles with all the different foods on and that you can go down the aisles. Okay. So thinking of a grocery store now, let's me ask you a question. Where in the grocery store almost always is the milk and the bread? Okay. If you think about that, for years and years, and I think things are just changing a little bit, the milk and the bread, the, mil the bread has always been in the very back corner at one side, and the milk is on the other side of the very back. Now, why in the heck do they do that? There's a science to it. They've got it figured out, okay? And for years, a lot of the stores have done it this way. And the, one of the reasons that they do that is because they get you to come in the entrance here and you have to go all the way to the back of the store to get there, to the milk. Then you go all the way across the rest of the store to get the bread. Then you come all the way back up to the clerks to check it out. And I don't know how many of you are like me, but if I stop at the store to pick up milk and bread, heaven forbid that I should take a, take a shopping cart with me because along the way I'm going to fill that dang thing up. Okay. So by putting the bread and the milk in the back of the store, it increases the number of sales that people get. Okay, 